Hello and welcome back. OK, we've got a lot of systems working inside the VGA circuit, but we've still got some more to do. I've got several modules on PCB now, a couple of modules still on breadboards, and I'm planning out how to convert the remaining circuitry to PCBs, just to create the space on my desk necessary to attack the final sections of the VGA, which is, of course, the sprite hardware. Now, one particular aspect I really need to resolve, which earlier on I thought I'd be covering in a later video, but I need to talk about it now so we can make some progress. So let's have a look at the build as it currently stands. Okay, so here we've got the VGA circuit and I've got it plugged into the CPU. I've got several modules as PCB, so the memory interface. Now that's not very pertinent to today's discussion. That's all about decoding the address lines for memory regions and for register setting. Now here's the sync generator that generates the horizontal and vertical sync pulses as well as the blanking signals and that's the origin of some of the timing that drives the rest of the circuit. And then we get into the circuits that actually generate color data we see on the screen. So you've got the tile map produces a high level low resolution tile index that goes to tile data which does a lookup to turn that into high resolution pixel data and then that gets passed on to the palette to turn the color index into to a 24-bit RGB data signal, and then that's passed on to the final output stage, which takes the digital RGB signals and turns them into analog for output to the VGA display. And finally, missing from this circuit is the sprite hardware. Now, that's a little bit more complex than I want to talk about today, but there's obviously a component of that will need to go in between the tile data and the palette in order to provide the overlay over the top of the background. OK, now we've all seen this circuit work, but the essence of a VGA circuit is that we have precise timing between the synchronization signals and the RGB color signals in order for the monitor to reconstruct the signal as a 2D image on screen. And we need to get those timing signals exactly right relative to one another. And I've knowingly allowed them to drift very slightly out as we've built the circuit. And I was expecting to kind of right at the end, go back, explain the problem there as part of the output circuit. But perhaps I need to actually stop and explain that now so I can uh, move the rest of the build further. So let's have a talk about that. So a signals progress through the system. The first module is the sync generator. We can think of that as the origin of some of the control signals. OK, so the first image generation section is the tile map. Now the sync signals go into there and that outputs a 8-bit tile index. That's used as a lookup into the tile data that extracts an 8x8 pixel tile and then it looks up the individual pixel inside there based on the sub-tile index that's output from the tile map along with the index. And then the four bits of pixel data that comes from the tile data, that's currently going into the palette. The palette outputs 24-bit digital color from its lookup, and that goes to the output DAX. And then you've got the final analog signal that goes to the VGA display. Now, the VGA dot clock is 25.175 megahertz. So that means all of this needs to happen in 39.72 nanoseconds, so roughly 40 nanoseconds. And that's not a lot of time. In fact, we can look at the operations we're doing inside this circuit and see how long it takes. Predominantly, each of these steps relate to a memory lookup, and that's taking around about 25 nanoseconds with the chips I'm using. So the tile map takes just over that because there's some circuitry to decode the address. Tile data is slightly more because there's additional circuitry on the output to turn the 8 bits into two 4-bit quantities. And then the palette's 30 nanoseconds approximately again because it's a simpler circuit. But if we add all of those up, we're clearly way over the 39.72 nanoseconds. So how have we made it work? So between the lookup in the tile map and the lookup in the tile data, we added a 574D type. And this actually hides a lot of this extra timing because we can spend the entirety of that 39 nanoseconds doing the tile map lookup, store the output in the 574, and then at the start of the next clock, we take the output there and start using it to look up in the tile data. So what we've actually done is broken this all down into a series of steps. 
So those D-type latches add a few nanoseconds to the signal propagation at each stage, but they actually break it up so each of these steps is happening in different cycles. Of course, there's a name for this. It's a pipeline circuit, which is, of course, the underlying principle that caused us to start making this particular CPU build in the first place. And the more you explore digital circuits, the more you find this same principle being applied to lots of different systems. But here's where the issue comes in. The sync generator is outputting horizontal, vertical and the blanking signal, and we're consuming it directly in the output circuit. Now the tile map takes this data in in order to calculate its XY position, so the time interval here doesn't matter. But each time we put one of these latch chips in, we're kind of delaying the image data by one pixel and then using the sync signals and the blanking signal as it was originally generated. So each time I've added a module to the VGA circuit, the image has moved by one pixel to the right. And since I want to design the final circuit for the palette and the output DAX onto PCB, I need to resolve this issue and get the timing exactly as we expect it to be, which means I need to start talking about some of the circuitry that goes in between. Now we don't really need to talk about the detail of the sprite circuit at this point, but what we do know is we've got two steps that we can run this circuitry in parallel to and not add anything to the timing of this first part of the circuit. And then rather than driving the pixel data from the tile data direct to the palette, we're going to introduce the sprite overlay circuit whose job it is to merge the output from the sprite hardware with the tile map and tile data underneath it and produce the final color. Now all these 574 D-type matches are clocked with the main pixel clock and we need to make the control signals line up with the data as we finally have it. And the simplest way we could do that is at each step when we delay the signal by one clock, we also delay the control signals. And that's actually all we need to do to make this work, apart from that's um, circuitry we haven't built in so far because we don't need to do anything quite that complex. We can actually just add the four steps of delay to the final stage before we output the sync signals to the monitor. And of course, those four separate D types all would have lots of spare channels on them because we've only got three signals we want to pass through. So we can collapse that down and get away with less latch chips. So what I'd like to do now is to add a proxy to the circuit for this sprite overlay that just delays the pixel by one clock. Add the D-type latches, which will delay the control signals. And then that means that the flow of the circuit is complete. We've just got to fill the gaps in and we have a final working VGA circuit. And that's going to make it a lot easier to plan the later stages. So let's do that. OK, I've got a fresh breadboard and these ones are pretty good because you can take strips off. Now I need to get that into the bottom. That cable's in the way. Right, so I'm just going to move the power inputs over one. We need to daisy chain power and ground. Okay, I just need to move the camera up very slightly so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get the latch in there to deal with the transfer of the four bits of data from the tile data to the palette. And so this latch is going to be a proxy for the sprite merging hardware. Now we do have this uh, awkward cable that is actually just bringing the high four bits of that input to ground. So if I position this right, I can use pre-existing ground lines for that. I need a power and ground. I appreciate this is not very easy to see what I'm doing. You need an output enable. And then the top four bits I'm pulling down. If I move this across one, it's going to be a lot easier. I'm going to use a different cable here. I need to turn it round because the low bit was on the left on our breakout here. But it was also a ground signal that I can utilize like so. 
Which in fact doesn't need to be longer. And we just need to send the clock signal in. All right, so all we've done here is delayed the image signal by one extra clock. So this is as bad as it should get with the final circuit. Now we've got the sprite merge proxy. Let's power it up and just double check what we're seeing. Okay, something's not quite right there. What have we disturbed? So whatever made the background go gray is still there, but the pixels themselves seem to have stabilized. Okay, so all those inputs are low, so the screen should be black. And there we had it. It's just a loose wire here meant that the data I was writing into the palette was getting messed up. And that is an example of why I want to simplify some of the wiring here, get some of this work onto PCBs before I try and roll the build forward. Now, I don't want to mess around with complicated test code, but I do have one thing that I think is going to help. And this is the simple maze generator program that I demonstrated when I was first looking at the tile data circuit. Now, the reason why I'm interested in this is because it's got these nice little angle lines, which I think will make it perfectly clear when things line up, but I need it to not scroll. Now, because these angled lines are exactly one tile, we should see the converging on the right hand side and starting evenly on the left. And the fact that we see a slight offset is exactly what we would expect with the delay we've got introduced by these latch chips. I think I can draw over the top of this some text which will make it clear in a different way. Yeah, so we can see the text here that says value has got a tiny fraction of the maze to the left of it, although the initialized function was supposed to line that up exactly. Now we need to deal with the signals. Let's again power and ground. Output enable is always on. Daisy chain that clock signal. So we've got three signals, the horizontal sync, the vertical sync, and the blanking. The vertical sync, I think we can ignore for now because a couple of pixels off on that isn't gonna make any difference. In fact, the documentation is slightly unclear on exactly how the two should line up. So the blanking and the horizontal sync, those are the ones that actually have a relevance to us at the full pixel clock rate. So we've got to delay those signals by four clocks. So I only need one of these chips because we've got eight signals on each. So I'm going to feed the first two outputs to the second two inputs. Second two outputs to the next two inputs. And so on. Pull the sync signals from there. So vertical sync is the middle one. We should be able to change that unimpeded from there. So H sync and that's blanking. All right, so let's move them across to the inputs to our new digital delay. And if we take the final output, we should have that signal delayed by four clocks. Okay, so now we can see the entire image has shifted left by four pixels, which by the looks of it is one more than we needed. So I could get it to display correct by moving the signals left by one. Actually, no, two more than needed. So that's correct. And that's consistent with the idea that when I first showed this piece of terminal code with the character set, it was working correctly but we've added two additional steps to the system since I did that. 
so it's moved off by two pixels when we make the circuit what we think it should be. And of course, that was compensated for by an adjustment of the scroll registers, so we need to set them back to what they should be. Right, so here we see the scroll X is D1FF. So if we add two to that, it goes the wrong way. Of course, these are actually negative numbers, so they go in the opposite direction and is intuitive. So we subtract the two and bang, it works. Okay, so all we need to do to make that initialize correctly now is we're going to change the initial value of the scroll register to 49, which is what we manually set it to with the memory poke there. Okay, now this was of course a very simple circuitry change. What we've actually done is added a one cycle delay to the pixel data and a four cycle delay to the signals that are controlling the horizontal sync and the blanking. And that means that the signals line up in the way we expect them to in the circuit. We had to make a slight tweak to the scroll register initialization in order to make those line up. But now we've got the circuit operating as we expect. And most importantly, this has unblocked my ability to move on and start building the PCBs for the output circuit and for the pallet, safe in the knowledge that everything's going to line up in the final build the way I expect it to. As always, a big thanks to everyone who continues to support me on Patreon. And I hope everyone found this interesting. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.